Uh, I've been touring non-stop with the uh, Akai Force for the last six months. It's completely changed my approach to live performance. What's up? You got your boy Direct, aka Native Shades, reminding you to like and subscribe. Cause today we're gonna be talking about the Akai Force. What had happened was <laughs> the Akai Force. So the year is 2019 and everything is going smooth in the Akai universe. Everything is going cool. They just dropped the MPC X, they dropped the MPC Live, and for the most part, the consumers are happy. Nothing to complain about. Akai is once again on top of the hill. Or so it may seem. Every now and then you would hear rumors. There was little birds chirping. Birds chirping all around. Chirp, 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 chirp all flying around the skies chirping. And they were talking about Akai was coming out with another MIDI controller. So people was kind of tight. They was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. You guys are coming out with a controller? And they were like, no, 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 no. It, it, it's a product, it's controller based, but it's standalone too, you know? Don't worry, don't worry. You know, but the consumers was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We just started complaining, screaming standalone, protesting outside of Akai headquarters, yelling out, we want standalone, we want standalone. We finally get it. It's been like two years we've had the X in the live, and now you guys are talking about going back to a controller again. What's going on? People wanted answers, and they wanted answers now. And Akai was like, no, no, listen, listen. We, we, we have something coming out. It's called the Akai APC. Relax. The APC? So people assumed Akai was coming out with an Ableton Live type product. People thought it stood for Ableton Production Center. Is that what you guys are coming up with? So then it came out, no, APC stands for Akai Performance Controller. So everybody was kind of tight because people at that time wanted updates on the X and the Live. You had some Live guys like, hey, why can't we get updates? Why can't we get a mic preamp or hype synths? Even though we don't have a mic input here, but still, we want updates. You gotta remember, Kai didn't win back the community yet. You know, they were just taking a foot forward as far as winning back the community. They just stopped half-stepping. You know what I'm saying? The old school MPC heads was like, oh, here comes Akai going, doing their same old dumb stuff again. You know, so a lot of the old heads were still on the fence. So everybody in the MPC world was patiently waiting for NAM 2019 to see what was going on, to see what they were talking about. And as it turned out, it wasn't an Akai performance controller. It wasn't an APC. It was a force, an Akai force. You had 64 velocity and pressure sensitive pads with backlighting. You had 360 degree touch sensitive knobs. You had a full color and backlit touch screen. You had an ethernet link port. You even had four, count them, four CV gate outputs for all the modular heads out there. You had MIDI in, MIDI out, could run plugins, headphone jack, the whole shebang. So Akai put out the Akai Force. It was very, very similar to the Ableton push. You gotta understand, Ableton had a huge, and I mean a vast and huge community as far as doors are concerned. And a lot of folks love that Ableton push kind of workflow where you're launching clips and you have all the 64 pads and you can do all your creative uh, melodies and everything like that. And Akai, Akai was pretty smart and they wanted to tap into that market and they did with the Akai Force. So the old school kind of legendary legacy MPC user was very skeptical in the direction Akai was going with this Akai Force thing. 
you know it's kind of like having the new guy at the job you know the guy that you feel is hired to replace you you know the new company man <laughs> he'll walk up to you and your buddies when you guys are chilling by the water cooler like hey my name is peter um how's everyone doing nice day isn't it um hey man i'm gonna really try to make sure everything runs efficient did anyone catch the game yesterday and you guys look at him like yeah we didn't have time to watch the game we had to get all these reports ready for work we're always working that's something that we do over here why did you enjoy the game <laughs> When he asks you guys where's the bathroom, you guys lead him down the hallway to the dumpster. <laughs> yeah, that's how the old school kind of legendary legacy NPC users felt about this new direction Akai was going. The Force was a really interesting and unique kind of workflow. The layout basically makes it that all your important buttons, your important menus and everything is just a touch away. You know what I'm saying? So you can just uh, touch the button there and launch a clip. Push a button to sequence set it. If you want to start messing around with filters and your knobs, they're already mapped to certain settings already, all pre-ready for you. And not for nothing, the 64 pad layout makes it that you can create very interesting melodic like workflows. You know what I'm saying? Like the 16 pad, the conventional 16 pad MPC layout, a lot of, um, let's say keyboard players, sometimes they might have problems with it as far as playing chords or certain melodies on it. But on a 64 grid kind of layout, you could kind of play your melodies easier. You know what I'm saying? You can map them out chromatically or map them out any way that you want to map them out where it's comfortable to play multiple melodies at once or multiple melodies just in a comfortable setting. So after they put out the Akai Force, for the most part, everybody embraced it. A lot of the old NPC heads, the new guys, everybody kind of said, you know what, this is cool. Even if this thing isn't for me, I'm okay with it. It's cool. Until about a week ago. <laughs> Everything was all good just a week ago. A big issue came up in the Akai world. And that issue is, you guessed it, disc streaming. Now, the Akai Force came out with two gig of memory. And pretty much most of the NPCs recently that came out has about two gig of memory. That's enough. That's more than enough for most people. But you do have some people that would love more memory because they're like when you add in all the plugins all the sample packs all the sounds that you're downloading you might hit that two gig mark faster than you think especially if you're using it like in a dj setting where you might load whole songs like most people that use an mpc might just load up four bars worth of a sample and do what they gotta do with it but if you're doing a live performance you might you might want your whole sound library in the, in the MPC. And because of that, you probably will hit that two gig mark pretty fast. So Akai allowed for disc streaming in the Akai Force. So now you don't have to go into the memory of the actual unit. You can go into the memory of the disc. So if you have a USB or if you're connecting it to a SSD hard drive or something like that, it can use the memory from that disc and free up your memory in the unit itself. This is great, but now MPC X users, MPC Live, Live 2, MPC 1 users want disc streaming. <laughs> it's kind of like having that a-hole uncle, the one that'll buy, like it'll be Christmas time and he'll buy one of his nephews, the whole Marvel action figure collection with like Wolverine, Spider-Man, Hulk, Captain America, you named it, he has the whole crew. And then that, that nephew sibling, he'll get him for Christmas, a pair of socks. You know what I'm saying? It's not even clean socks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how the MPC1, MPC X, MPC Live, Live 2 users feel about the current updates 
for the Kai Force. So when the Force came out, it was about $1,400, actually $1,499. And that's pretty expensive, you know what I'm saying? It's not too expensive, it's not over the top, but it was pretty expensive. But you gotta think about what you were getting. You, you were getting two XLR inputs in the back of the unit for your microphone. You were getting, you know, on the, on the Force, whatever you're doing on the touch screen didn't have to match what you were doing with the pads. You know what I'm saying? So you could be doing something on the pads like sequencing your, your beat or something like that on the pads while on the touch screen, you could be on a whole different program. You could be on a plug-in synthesizer or something like that. And the Force also had a cue in where you can cue in, like let's say if you were launching clips, you can set up the next clip that you can have cued in where you can listen to it through your headphone jacks and it's not actually playing through the output of the unit itself. So you're, you know, it's kind of like being a DJ and you can hear what you're about to play next to see if it goes with the music you already have and things like that. I mean, you was getting a lot with this unit, man. I mean, I think it was worth the price at $1,500. And since then they dropped it to about $1,100. So I'm not mad at them, I'm not mad at them. But yeah, that's the Akai Force. What had happened was... So this is your boy, Direct, AKA Native Shade, reminding you to go down low in the description and get that MPC-1 Hidden Strategies where I'm giving you a free MPC-4000 sound library. It doesn't exist anymore. Over a gig of sounds. You know what I'm saying? Put that joint on your MPC-1 and you are good. So this is your boy Direct, AKA Native Shape, reminding you to like and subscribe. And I'm signing off.